in 4.2, we again look at the idea of judicial legitimacy and how it affects judges. Uh, in this context, we're going to look at a state court. More particularly in reading 4.2, we're actually going to look at the North Carolina Supreme Court. Now, North Carolina is unique in this regard in that the state has changed the mechanism by which it chooses its state Supreme Court justices a few times within a short amount of time. Um, it has fluctuated from nonpartisan to partisan elections. Um, so the idea of how we select judges in the state of North Carolina has, is relatively salient uh, to the population. And what this has done is this has served to politicize uh, the North Carolina Supreme Court and made it very much a platform for both Democrats and Republicans um, to make arguments regarding the nature of judicial legitimacy and the nature of the Supreme Court um, in, in the state of North Carolina. Now, this survey has a few problems. Um, and because of that, I'm not too certain um, about the findings. So first, it's not at all clear that they measured legitimacy uh, correctly, um, nor did they really take into account um, a degree of political knowledge. Now, these two things are important. Legitimacy is not simply approval. It is not do you approve or disapprove of the job the court is doing, nor is it do you perceive the court as being too ideological or being too conservative or being too liberal. Uh, these aren't really accurate ways to measure legitimacy. Um, legitimacy is a much more long-term, durable uh, process in which you recognize the legitimacy of the institution regardless of if you disagree with the decisions it's making or how ideological it is. Also, it doesn't take into account um, to, a, to a large degree political knowledge. It measures education, but it doesn't really directly measure political knowledge. Now, these are important factors. Um, as we know that political knowledge plays a role in, in how one sees uh, judges and how one perceives judicial legitimacy. So the, these sort of um, errors kind of make me uh, question the findings uh, uh, of this work. Um, but I will say that the findings of it are pretty consistent with what we know generally. But so I want to kind of take a, take a step uh, to the side and talk about what we know more about courts and their selection mechanisms and how they how they work in conjunction with sort of this idea of ideology. Um, so we tend to think, at least to some extent, that judges are apolitical actors. And this is sort of this myth of judging and this myth of legality, that judges are trained to the point where they are neutral arbiters um, and, and they merely uh, in judgment that it can be seen in a legal context that isn't neatly mapped onto an ideological context. This is what we think, not necessarily what we know. And we know that that's not the case, that judges are ideological in terms of how they make decisions. Um, but when you look at how institutions choose judges and the method by which they choose judges, it has some sort of alternative effects. So in this concept of judicial legitimacy, we know at least functionally, uh, that elections are legitimacy conferring events. Um, so that when institutions are elected, which means that we take the sovereignty that we possess as, as a body, uh, constituents, and choose someone to act on our behalf, that that selection process confers legitimacy if it's done fair and impartially. Um, this is true for all elections. Um, it's also true um, based on the work of Jim Gibson, um, to judicial elections, that these judicial elections are also legitimacy conferring events. So whereas we think about the United States Supreme Court is gaining its legitimacy from um, sorts of actions it takes to court this idea of legitimacy, um, elected courts do that as well, but they also have um, the mechanism of elections which also confer legitimacy in and of themselves. Um, so the, the, these events confer a significant amount of legitimacy to the institutions. Um, but not all judges are elected. In fact, the majority of judges in the United States aren't elected, despite, even at the state level. Um, and, and so the question is, to, to, to what extent to, is, is this legitimacy widespread? So when we look at contested elections, so states that elect their judges either partisanly or nonpartisanly, uh, what we find is that these, these are legitimacy conferring events. They also 
as, as you'll see in the reading from myself um, and Dr. Romano, they also do a very good job at creating a representational link between the court as a body and the public. And they create this representational link ideologically. Um, so in our reading, you'll see that when we look at the different ways in which we select judges in the United States, be it partisan election, nonpartisan election, Missouri plan, or elite appointment, that this nature of what we call ideological drift varies significantly depending on how the court is selected and retained. Um, so we know that these legitimacy conferring events of elections play a significant role in individuals seeing their courts as legitimate. These elections also play another role. Elections serve to increase political knowledge. Um, so not only are these individuals more likely to support their court um, because they are elected and that election process confers legitimacy, these individuals are also learning more about their court, more about the candidates for the court, more about the incumbent judges on the court. And that also is legitimacy conferring. Knowing more about an institution, especially one that is selected fairly, um, tends to confer more legitimacy upon the institution. So when we slip down the other two mechanisms, um, Missouri plan systems and elite appointment systems, we can't say a lot about their legitimacy because as you see from our article, the connection between the public and the courts is much looser. It's not nearly as close. That there does exist some sort of tacit representational link, but it's not as explicit as elections. Um, you're not choosing the members of your court. You are, in the Missouri plan context, maintaining individuals who are already on the court. And in the elite appointment context, you're choosing the individuals that choose individuals to sit on the court. Now, what this means for legitimacy, we're honestly not sure. And future research needs to examine um, judicial, judicial legitimacy in those contexts. But the research from Dr. Romano and myself can make a few other assessments. Um, first, they're not effective institutions at leashing ideology of the courts to the public. In fact, there's a significant amount of ideological drift between these courts and the public. So under the Missouri plan and other appointment systems, you see that these courts are much more likely to diverge ideologically from their from the electorate than they would in sort of partisan and nonpartisan systems. Now, we know from the first reading of 4.1, we also know from the reading of 4.2, that as you see the court be more ideological, um, you're less likely to approve and agree and see the court's decisions as legitimate. Um, so since those institutions allow the courts to drift ideologically, there still remains a question in regards to legitimacy. Are individuals aware that their courts are ideologically moving away from them? Um, if they are, then legitimacy might be affected um, by the methods by which those judges are selected in a way that elected judges aren't affected. Um, and so there, there still needs to be a lot of research done in this area, but we know very clearly that the methods by which we select judges uh, affect the legitimacy of the institutions in which they reside. And we know that that's a positive generally for elected judges and for judges that are selected and retained either through the Missouri plan system or through elite appointment the jury's still out with regards to how uh, those judges are, how the legitimacy of those institutions are affected, but we know ideologically that they are not at all um, leashed to the judges in the same way that uh, their ideology is not leashed to the public in the same way that elected judges are. And that may be a hint um, to how individuals in those states um, perceive judicial legitimacy generally.